Everybody. Good to see everybody out this morning. Welcome to Yellow Creek. 
Again, I'm going to say it, I say it every week, but if you're a visitor here, we want to tell you that you are very welcome, and uh, we love having you here. We have Sunday school every Sunday at 10 o'clock, uh, and we got classes for every age, so uh, come on in uh, a little early next time you come and, and join us for Sunday school. Announcements for this week, we have got Wednesday night, uh, Nicole's not here, but she wanted me to announce that Wednesday night they're going to have nachos for jam, that's at 6 o'clock. So come out for that, and then at 6.30, the kids start their activities, and if you don't know, we also have an adult Bible study on Wednesday night out in the fellowship hall. Um, the, um, uh, she wants to thank everybody that, that has signed up for um, uh, jobs for Bible school this summer. There are a few positions still available, mostly teaching uh, class jobs. So uh, get with her. And uh, she will, she'll have a meeting soon for, for Bible school. I know it seems far away, but it really is. Um, and also there's a jam calendar for March in the foyer if you need a calendar for, for that. Um, other announcements. I know this Saturday, March the 5th, they're having a ladies fundraiser. Uh, were you, who was supposed to talk about that? Go ahead. Five to eight on Saturday evening. Um, they're, it's an Italian dinner. They got spaghetti and lasagna and fettuccine things of those sorts. Um, so come out and support the Ladies Circle. They do a lot for the church. Um, it is donations only, but they they would love to have you there, uh, even if you're uh, not able to give, uh, but just a little. And Sunday next Sunday is Brotherhood. Uh, 7 o'clock out in the fellowship hall uh, uh, join us for that we've got a special guest speaker uh, Ben Souther who's running for the 9th district Republican nomination um, he's going to be speaking at our brotherhood so um, let us know I know that um, if you're going to attend that uh, we need to make sure we, we order a little more food than normal uh, we just need to know about how much to, to bring so that's the what Absolutely, yeah. Uh, so if you do have a donation for any anything, Lady Circle, the youth, anything that you want to designate, if you write a check out, put it in the four line, what it is. Uh, if you have cash, maybe have a little envelope or something, you can put that in there and just write on the outside. Uh, anytime you have a donation or uh, that needs to go to a specific place. All right, I know I forgot something. Are there any, any other announcements going on this week? Anything to be to be announced? Yes, I told you I forget something. Uh, Deborah Perry and Jaden's call will be here the second Sunday evening, six o'clock. That's the Mar March 13th. So on March 13th, we've got Deborah Perry and Jaden's call for our quarterly singing. So come on back for that. Anything else? All right. No other announcements. We'll recognize our banner classes for this morning. We've got three. Would all those in the nursery class be held up? Nursery. Yeah, there's one. There they are. Hey. All those in the golden circle. All those in the golden circle. They can stand up on their own power. <laughs> and the young at heart class as well. All those in the young at heart. Any birthdays or any, any, any anniversaries this week? Anybody with a birthday or anniversary? Any birthdays around? Nobody's nobody. All right. I'm doing good. Glad to be in the Lord's house. Yeah. All right. If there are no birthdays or anniversaries, um, we'll go ahead and uh, do our prayer requests. Uh, anybody that has a prayer request to mention this morning? 
Yeah, the, remember the family of Mike Sherwood. He, Mike passed away uh, yesterday morning, or early yesterday morning. Remember that. The Moore and the Wood families, uh, Hallsman, passed away last night. Moore and Wood families, remember this. Any others? Kayla Dorsey. Let's remember this. Any others? What was the name again? The Welchel family. Remember this. Any other prayer requests? It's not really a prayer request, but I do want to thank the Lord for the two souls that we've had saved these last two weeks. And I wanted to thank the Lord for saving my soul as well. Um, while, while I'm here in front of the microphone, I'll let it be known. I want to thank the Lord for, for what he's done for me in my life. And if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ this morning, I, I pray you make that right today. Before we may, uh, take up our morning offering, uh, Brother Scott, are you lead us in prayer this morning? So you, you get a song? Yes. All right. What, do you have a number on your heart, Maxine? That's a great one. Everyone stand while we take up our morning offering. And if you're in the choir, come on down.
mean, you, you, I know you lost some of them. I wasn't really thinking about that. Call back.
stop period there. That's okay. Because right now this is home. Yeah. And I'm thankful. God's been us here. I'm thankful for every person that wars in my kids. Thank y'all for loving us. Just thank God that he's let us be here for a little while. Amen. Anybody else? Anybody else got anybody? in the Psalms of Faith.
one up there on the top on the side. Way down deep in my soul. Page 368.
you know, we, we, we don't know how rough it's going to get. I mean, God knows those children aren't running around in Ukraine playing like, like our children are. We don't know what it's going to be here. And I can stand here and say that because I'm here and I feel it, but at home I get so scared for my grandchildren. I mean, I, we are blessed. We've got to pray for this country, for our leaders, even though we may not agree with him, but we've got to pray. Amen. He's got to see. Amen. And everybody in Amen. Ukraine needs our prayers. Yeah. This is terrible. Yeah. What we're in. This is nothing we've lived through. But I, I tell you, I've got eight grandchildren. I want to see them run and play. Amen. I want to see them get saved by the grace of God, and I want to live. Amen. His will, not just today, but when I'm at home, I need to do better. Amen. Y'all pray for me. Bless your heart, God. Amen. What do we sing about it?
morning. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let's go into the house of the Lord. Uh, there's no place I'd rather be uh, here this morning uh, than at Yellow Creek Baptist Church. I appreciate uh, the beautiful singing, the beautiful playing uh, that we've heard. I appreciate you obeying the Lord. appreciate you uh, following uh, the Holy Spirit. I appreciate you. Uh, hey, I, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just glad to be saved. Uh, I am. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be. Hey, I'm glad I'm in the church. Uh, I'm glad I was raised in church. Uh, I'm glad that uh, I, I, I know I say this a lot and y'all sung it. I, I'd still rather be an old time Christian than anything I know. I had. I, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Uh, outside of anything that's ever happened to me, being an old time Christian is by far the greatest blessing God ever gave me. I didn't deserve it, Joyce. Uh, I'm telling you. Uh, I'm glad. If God would have just saved good people, he'd have passed me over. But he came to seek and to save that which was lost. And I, I fit that description. I was lost. I'm glad I'm not lost this morning. Uh, but I have some, uh, I've thought about this scripture right here. It's in the book of Luke in the 23rd chapter. Uh, and, and we're going to read it. I've thought about this about <clears throat> probably half of the week, I guess. Uh, Mandy played a song uh, for me, uh, and it talked about mercy, uh, and, and, and I really thought about the scripture, uh, we was at home the other night, she went listening to that song, and I really thought about this, I, I, it really came on my heart and my mind uh, when we was listening to that song, uh, and, and this, this scripture is in the 23rd chapter of the book of St. Luke, it's going to be uh, beginning in the 13th. Uh, right, let's, let, let's start at 12, the 12th verse, and uh, we'll, just, we'll just read it. Uh, I guess I, 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 I do desire your prayers, but, but this scripture right here has, has really bothered me for, for, for years. I'm 44 years old. It's been bothering me as long as I can remember hearing it. Uh, this scripture has, has really about made me mad, just to be honest with you, when I read it. Uh, it has. I, I'm telling you, and I know that sounds crazy, but but now uh, 
I see it different. I see it different. And, 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 and let's start in verse 12 of uh, chapter 23 of the book of Luke. It said, In the same day Pilate and Herod were made friends together. Uh, for before they were at enmity uh, between themselves and Pilate, when he had called together the chief priest and the rulers and the people said unto them, Ye have brought this man unto me, talking about Christ, uh, as one that perverteth the people. And behold, I have examined him uh, before you and have found no fault in this man touching those saints whereof ye accuse him. No, nor yet Herod, for I sent uh, you to him, and lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto him. <clears throat> I will therefore chasten him and release him. So Pilate, listen, I, I, I just want to start right there. Now Pilate really didn't want nothing to do with Jesus. He, he, really, he really didn't want to uh, take part in this, but they kind of had him held to the fire. Now his wife, Pilate was a man. Outside of his job, outside of his position, Outside of everything else, his wife came up and said, that, uh, Pilate, I want to tell you something. Don't have nothing to do with this Jesus. She said, I had a dream. She said, I had a dream, and, 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 and there's going to be a lot of bad stuff happens. He didn't care really about what Herod said, his acquaintance that he had just become friends with over this crucifix. But his wife said, uh, don't fool with him. And that's where Pilate stood. He really didn't want to have nothing to do with Jesus. He didn't want to be tied to the crucifixion. He said, I'll just scourge him and release him. My wife's done told me, don't fool with this man. And he's he, he, he's smart enough man to know. I, I, I don't care what nobody says. My wife's got far better sense than what I got. Look at our track record. I guarantee she does. Pilate knew better. You understand what I'm saying? He knew better. His wife said don't. Regardless of that, he knew this is wrong. Right. That's where we're at. And, let, and, and let, let, I, I, I want to get on down into that. In verse 16, he said, I will therefore chasten him, chastise him, and release him for of necessity he must release one of them at the feast. And he wanted it to be Jesus. Probably deep down he did. But listen to what the people said. And I'm fixing to get into the part that bothered me and has bothered me uh, and, and, and throughout the years. And it says, and they cried out all at once saying, away with this man and release unto us Barabbas. That's bothered me, Greg, for years and years and years. Now, we're talking about a week span of time when they said, here comes Jesus of Nazareth, and they laid the palm leaves out. And he rode into town, and they cried, Hosanna to the king. Now, it's the same crowd that uh, rejoiced at the uh, greeting of Jesus as he, as he rode in. The Bible says on an ass's coat, and they rejoiced. Now, here they are one week later, and they say, away with him and crucify him. It's amazing, ain't it? Crucify. And they cried out all at once, saying, Away with this man and release unto us Barabbas. Yes. I just, Greg, I just, you know where we're from. That ain't right. Stuff that ain't right. You say, That ain't right. That ain't right, is it? We're going to get on down into this right here. Who for a certain sedition made in the city and for murder was cast into prison. He's a prisoner. I've been mad about this, Joyce, for a long time. I'm all, I'm all right. 
Pilate therefore willing to release Jesus spoke again to them but they cried saying crucify him crucify him and he said unto them the third time why what evil hath he done I have found no cause of death in him I will therefore chastise him and let him go and they were instant with loud voices requiring that he might be crucified and the voices of them that heard the chief priest prevailed and Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required and he released unto them him that for sedition and murder was cast in the prison whom they desired but he delivered Jesus to their will and let him go. I've been mad all these years. You know who wasn't mad? You know who wasn't mad? Barabbas. Listen to me when I'm telling you this. I, this has bothered me. I, Bobby, I, I can't for the life of me wrap my mind around how the congregation said, release this murderer, this robber, and crucify Jesus Christ, a perfect and upright man, one that not, not even God was found in his mouth. He was as innocent when they said crucify him as he was on Christmas morning, a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes. Uh, hey, no sin ever entered his life, and they said crucify him, and I've been mad about it, but Barabbas was tickled to death. <laughs> What about Barabbas' mama? You say he didn't have no mama. Yeah, he had a mama. Yeah, he had a mama. He had a daddy too. I thought about this as they, and you can read this in, in, in all four Gospels. It says one, one place that, that, that Barabbas was bound laying there. Now he knows He's been locked up and he knows this is my last. He knows as the sun rose on that morning, this is the last day. I'm, I, this is the day that I die. They're going to kill me. All that I've ever done is caught up with me. You Praise God, you think about mercy fixing to show up right here in just a quick minute. Grace is fixing to show up. You say, hey, you, you know what? I've been mad at Barabbas all these years because he was a sinner and he was guilty and he was a murderer. You say, well, well, rightly so, yes, sir. But praise God, this morning, everybody in the house at Yellow Creek's just as, praise God, Greg, guilty. My daddy used to sing a song that says, guilty, huh? I stand before him guilty, but God's love and compassion set me free. Amen. Praise God, that's what he came here to do. I've been aggravated about this scripture for you. That's what Jesus came to do. Hey, in one place he said, I came to let captivity captive. That's what he came to do, is to release the sinner. Those that, you know what he did? Yeah. Listen now, when they built that cross now, when they built the cross, and this is a whole lot and a whole lot of thinking and a whole lot higher, but when they built that cross, I, I don't know who built it, the Bible don't say, but no doubt they thought this is Barabbas's. If he knew him, maybe he knew him. This is Barabbas's cross. This is him. This is for the guilty. But Jesus said, you know what he did? He said, I'll die in his place. He took my place. Amen. Let me tell you something this morning. You think you're all good? You think you're a good, great Christian? Let me tell you what. Was it not for Jesus Christ and what he did on Calvary's cross? He said, I'll die in their place. Amen. Amen. Do 
No tell my Barabbas wasn't tickled to death. We preach about Lazarus. We say Lazarus died. And Jesus, they sent for Jesus and he didn't come right on time. And then when he did come, they said, if you, Lord, if you'd have been here, you'd have healed him and he'd still be alive. And they was a little bit mad at Jesus. Why didn't you show up when I wanted you to show up? He'd still be alive. We'd still be a family. We'd still be rejoicing. And, and, and then we preach about how Jesus went down to the tomb and he said, Lazarus, come forth. And it says that Lazarus came out. And I, I picture him in my mind. Uh, and, and wrapped up kind of like a mummy. And he, he came forth out of the tomb. And, and Jesus said, loose him and let him go. And, and, and took the grave clothes off. And we preach about it. Let me tell you what, Barabbas was pretty happy. We rejoice over Lazarus and mad at Bar Barabbas. I don't care who you are. I don't care how good you are. I don't care how poor you are. I don't care what's the, what's the deal in your life. Hey, I'm going to tell you, I don't care how mean you are. You know what I'll do if a mean person gets saved? Gene, I'll rejoice. Let me tell you, Gene, if it wasn't for Christ, there's no telling where I'd be. There's no telling, Bradley, if it wasn't for the grace of God and him reaching down. There ain't no telling where I'd be, Lamar. If David, if it wasn't for Jesus Christ, I, I know. I know what it was. And I, I Gary, I know where, where God, hey, there's an old song that says when he reached down, he, he had to reach way down for me. Hey, let me tell you what, Barabbas was tickled to death. He said, I can't believe you preached that. Oh, yeah. He knew. You think about laying there. Yeah, have you ever come close to dying? I'm talking about you thought, well, boy, I just, I just narrowly missed death right there. You ever been there? Now that's where he. <laughs> that's where. <laughs> Greg, that's where. <laughs> that's where. <laughs> I, hey, you know, I, I, I was just a boy when the Lord saved me, but I feel like I narrowly missed it. <laughs> I do. They say, well, you know, I hear, I hear people testify. They say, I ran for years and years and years. As far as I know, the Lord spoke to me, and I got saved on that wisdom. Night, but I feel like I nearly missed death. I feel great like I nearly missed death. I sat there, I know that I was headed for hell, and I thought, what am I going to do in this place? And really, I thought, well, I'll try my best to act like nothing bothered me. I remember I looked up like this, and I looked up, and came back, was standing up there in the choir, and I seen her motion into my mama. They, they something wrong with you. Praise God, they was something wrong. I was guilty. I was guilty. You say, you're just a little bit of old boy. You're a good old boy. Yeah, I was a good old boy. I was as guilty as Barabbas. They was a death sentence, Jerry. They was a little bitty girl who got saved at a church. <laughs> they was a little bitty girl who got saved at a church service one time. She come to the altar. <laughs> she prayed <laughs> and prayed. <laughs> Brandon, she prayed. <laughs> just, a, <laughs> just a little bit old girl. <laughs> and her mama turned to the pastor and said, <laughs> Why she got to pray so long? <laughs> she just a little girl. <laughs> She surely couldn't have done that much wrong. <laughs> and what she got, what she got to get forgiveness for? <laughs> that pastor answered it as good as I've ever heard. He said, "Honey, she's getting forgiveness for the sins of her whole life." <laughs> Praise God! You think Barabbas turned around? said, well, let me go talk to the jailers and make sure everything's square. He ran out the door. Stan, he was tickled to be free, Stan. That's grace. 
<laughs> for years I wanted Barabbas to die. <laughs> <laughs> well, we talk, you said that, Greg. We talk about God's will. People say, I don't know what God's will is. He said, I'm willing <laughs> that none <laughs> should perish, <laughs> but that all. <laughs> See, when Christ died on Golgotha's hill, it put a, a, a umbrella, so to speak, over everybody. The good people, the good old boys, the bad people, the murderers, whoever you are, you can come and be saved by Jesus Christ. Be free to go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know Barabbas' life other than the, 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 the little bit that we can read. And I've told you, I didn't like him. Didn't like nothing about it. That Passion of the Christ movie that we talked about, I, I messed up and watched. Boy, I sure didn't like Barabbas after that. I know you ain't killed nobody, and probably most of you ain't. But you're just as guilty. The Bible says if we've guilty of the least of the commandments, we're guilty of all of them. <laughs> David said, I was born in sin, conceived in iniquity. When Adam sinned, he brought sin and death on every one of them. It's a death sentence. I saw something here a while back, maybe on Facebook or something. And, and, and you get, you get non-believers, they'll say this. They'll say, well, what kind of God would send somebody to hell? And they say that. What kind of God is that? The boy on there said, the God ain't sending you to hell. You're on your way to hell anyway. God's rescuing you and making a way. God didn't send you to hell. You on your hey, I want to tell you something. I, I know, I know that there's an age of accountability, and when you reach that age, whatever age it may be, whether it's five, six, seven, ten, forty, whatever, when you reach the age of accountability, that's when you're accountable for your soul and what you do with Jesus Christ. But before that, you're in God's safety in his hand. But we are born in sin and we're headed for hell from the they start until Jesus hung between heaven and earth and gave up the ghost and said it is finished and three days later on Easter morning he arose victorious over death. Amen. Hell in the grave. Hey, I don't know your heart. I'm, 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 I'm bound through. Y'all, everybody stand. Y'all get your song. I thought about this as y'all sung. And as people began to come to the altar, I thought about this. Last Sunday we had one saved. Sunday before that we had one saved. And uh, Greg asked me, and, and as the young people were singing, I said, you see her right there? He said, yeah. I said, that's, she got saved Sunday before last. And boy, y'all sung glory, glory, glory. Somebody touched me and she stood up on Sunday. I like to had a fit. And Greg asked me, he said, what did them other kids think about that? What did they, what did they do? I said, they soaked it up. He said, I know they did. Cause he said, I, Greg, you can, Bats for me on that. He said, I remember when I was lost and somebody get saved and I'd, I'd see somebody get saved and it'd tear me up. He said, because I know what I need to be saved. But I thought about that this morning. Maybe, maybe you're here this morning. Maybe you're here. A pastor over at Prospect. There's a good old man. He's a deacon over there. And I'm on, I'm on, I can't give his testimony, but I'm going to share what he told me. 
He said that he was on the school bus going home from school, and he said there was a revival meeting somewhere. And he said on the school bus going home that evening, he said, somebody said, did you know old so-and-so got saved at church last night? And he said, as soon as I said it, Chris, he said, I got under conviction on that school bus. Just at the words, just at the hearing. Don't tell me this morning that you can't sit and see uh, God move in the singing and move in the preaching and move at the altar call and not something stir in your heart, lost person. And maybe you're here. Maybe you've been here the last two Sundays. I don't know. Maybe you're here the last. Maybe it's your first time. You know what you do? We fix and say. When God gives you the invitation and God speaks, see, I was fine. I was fine all them years. I was good. Right? There wasn't no sense in me going to the altar. I was fine. Until he spoke and gave me that opportunity and, and, and let me see I'm lost. Don't you get saved till you get lost. When I realized I'm lost, then it was time. Then it was time to move. But if I would have shunned that wooing of the Holy Spirit, the dealing, the drawing power of God, you know what that would have been like? When they, when they cut the chains and the fetters off of Barabbas and, 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 and opened the door of the cell, and they said, all right, Barabbas, Jesus is going to die in your place. You know what it is when you turn God away? It's like if Barabbas would have said, no, I think I'll stay in here. Put them cuffs back on me. That's what you do when you shun the Holy Spirit and you say, no. You say, I'll stay in the prison. I'll stay in bondage. I'll stay lost. It's a shame, man. Don't you do that this morning. God's giving you opportunity. <laughs> we're going to sing just a little bit, and then we're going to open the doors of the church in just a little while. Keep that in mind. And I hope everybody that got saved comes and joins. But I hope there's... Wouldn't you like to see a few more? Amen. Wouldn't you like to see two or three more come and, 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 and be able to join? I ain't talking about joining church just because of numbers. I ain't care. I don't care. I'm talking about being saved. Huh? That's what it's all about, ain't it? Ain't that what it's all about? Being saved this morning. Let's sing. Page 321. People, I want to tell you something. Uh, we're going to sing one more verse, and I, I'm talking to saved people. I want you to move now. I do. It, uh, if the Lord's bidding you, I definitely want you to move. But but I, I want to see saved people move. You say, why is that? They may be a lost. Uh, it's going to sound crazy. They may be a lost person standing right here, and they just said, Lord, if so-and-so will move, I'll move. You say it don't happen. Yes, it does happen like that. It happens everywhere, every service, every Sunday morning. Somebody says, if so-and-so will move, I'll move. I've done it. You've done it. Let me tell you something, church. Move. 
If nothing else, you move to this altar and you pray for that one. You say, it ain't going to make no difference. Oh, yeah, it'll make all the difference in the world. It'll make all the difference. D.L. Moody said in one place, and I know I've said this, he said, every great and powerful move of God can be traced back to a kneeling figure. And I thought, boy, he said that as good as... <laughs> came through prayer. Church, let's move. You say, you're just trying to get us moved to this altar. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care what you wear. I don't care how smart you are. I don't care none of that. I don't see you move. And I, I, I want to see some of you that's been saved for 10, 15 years, that, that, that's still a babe in Christ. I want to see you get to where you, your relationship is close. Amen. You get to where you can shout a little. Hey, get to where it, it excites you when they say, uh, 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 let's go to God's house. Get that stirring back in your heart and in your life. Amen. Let's move, church. Let's move. Everybody that would. Everybody that would. Hey, by the way, come on now, I'm serious. We got revival coming up. Greg, I'm going to ask Greg if he'd lead us to the Lord in prayer. Got revival coming up, and there's so, <laughs> so many more that need to be saved.
Amen. Amen. Appreciate all you for coming uh, to the altar this morning. Appreciate all of you for being here. At this time, we're going to, everybody stand your feet. We're going to open up the doors of Yellow Creek Baptist Church for the savings of new members. Uh, if God saved you, uh, the next step in your uh, walk with Christ is to join the church and be baptized. You know what a baptizing is? You say, well, that makes me a member. No, that's showing the world that I got saved. And that old sinful man, boy, woman, girl, whatever you are, is, is, is laid down in a watery grave <laughs> and brought up a new, praise God, a new creature in Christ. Amen. That's what it is. Yes, I don't care if you're a member here or not. Just get baptized. Amen. But we're going to open up the doors. For the receivers and new members. You, if you've been saved, come on down here. Showing up. We're going to open the door this time. What a friend. What a friend. <laughs> I'm a member of Yellow Creek Baptist Church. All right. All right. You've heard her, heard her desire. You've heard her testimony. What's your pleasure? <laughs> Move in a whole lot of seconds. All in favor, say aye. aye. Anybody opposed by the same sign? All right. Y'all got anything? Well, I'm going to join her. I'm going to, uh, he saved my soul, and I have never actually been baptized. So. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> what about that? Amen. And you want to become a member of Yellow Creek Amen. too, right, man? I wasn't Amen. expecting that. That's good. That's great. All right, you've heard a desire. What's your pleasure? Motion to receive hers, candidate. Amen. I'm moving a whole bunch of seconds. All in favor, say aye. aye. Anybody opposed? By the same sign. Definitely not. I'd like to transfer. All right. <laughs> hey, all right. He's a member of Cold Spring Baptist Church, and he'd like to, he'd like to come to Yellow Creek Baptist Church. I didn't say that neither, but God, God gives us more than what. I ain't he good? Boy, God's good. All right, we'll, we'll receive him under the watch care until his letter can be received. So at this time, you've heard his desire. What's your pleasure? Make a motion we receive him until we get his letter. A candidate for bat uh, is under the watch care. <laughs> Bunch of seconds. All in favor, say aye. aye. Anybody opposed by the same sign? Certainly not. So God gives us way more than we even deserve, don't we? Thank you all so much. At this time, you all get your song. We're going to come around and, and give them the right hand of Christian fellowship. And then after baptizing and after we get his letter, we'll give them the right hand of church fellowship. So everybody, come on. Great job. Got a great 
Plaza.
limits on God. God's able. God's able. He's able to touch. He's able to heal. He's able to drop whatever he needs. We're going to keep coming around, fellowshipping. We're going to keep singing. <laughs> if there's somebody to sing, somebody wants to play. And if you want to go to church, when you get up here, come on, come on.